Welcome to the first video of the motors and generators topic. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to cover the first stop point, which says identify that the motor effect is due to the force acting on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. So before we start, I quickly want to go over the motors and generators because the topic itself is obviously all about motors and generators. So what motors are are these kind of looking things. And what they do is they help us turn electrical energy into mechanical energy. So E for electrical, M for mechanical. What that means is we can actually turn on the electricity and use those motors to make the electricity move because it turns into mechanical energy. Whereas generators, on the other hand, do the opposite. They turn mechanical energy, so M for mechanical energy, into electrical energy. E for energy, electrical energy. And what that means is, for example, if we have a coal power plant, what we burn the coal, that heat moves something, so the movement, the mechanical energy, and that movement then produces energy. So that's how we can use coal to produce energy for generators. That's why these are really important, because without motors, most of our, many of our appliances, our electrical appliances, wouldn't work. And without generators, we wouldn't have the, much, the amount of energy we have at the moment, because most of our actual energy is produced by generators. That's why these are really important. That's why we cover them in quite a bit of detail. Before we start, I want to also go over a couple of concepts that you have done in year 11 that we have to know for the, to be able to appreciate this whole module and whole chapter. So the first one is that moving charges produce magnetic field. So they produce their own magnetic field. So what you can see here is this stands for I. So I is means current. And current is just charge over time, so charge per second. So obviously, if, you know, that means we have a moving electrical field if we have current. And so that's the first part. Moving charge produces magnetic fields, and we can actually determine the direction of that magnetic field using the right-hand rule. And with the right-hand rule, all you have to do is put your thumb in the direction of the actual magnetic field. So in this case, the thumb would be turning upwards. And then wrap your hands on your fingers around the actual device. And then the actual direction of your thumbs determines the direction of the magnetic field. So this would be the direction, and you can see here this same magnetic field gives you the same idea. So they're moving so from here to here. And it's important to know a different notation as well, because you might get this notation quite often as well. And it's either this here or this here. And the best way to visualize it is this represents the tip of an arrow. So if you just see this part, it means you just see the tip of the arrow. And that means that something's coming towards you. It's coming in towards your face if you can see that point. Whereas if you see this here, it's X, what that means is you can see the back of an arrow. So if this happens, what that means is it's actually going out. So it's going to away from your face, it's going into the computer, and you only see the back of it. That's why it has that X. So you have that dot, which is the, the dot, the pointy sharp end of the arrow, or you have that X, which is the actual feathery part at the end. So if that means it's going away from you, this means it's going towards you. And what you can imagine here is if we have, for example, this here, now, here, it's going towards us, which means we can represent it by just a dot as well. And here, it's going away from us. So we can represent it by that X for going away. So we can use either of those notations. And what you should also know is that magnetic fields, so magnetic field lines, always move from north to south. And that's always happens with the magnetic field lines. They always have to go from north to south. And this is how that will look. So we have north pole here, and it goes to a south pole there. So these might be two separate magnets. And that's how that looks. And the second part is that the magnetic field lines never cross. They can never cross. They always have to evade each other. So if you have two norths, north, north, like if you, like if you imagine you have two north ends of a, of a magnet and you hold them close, to, it's close together, what happens? Can you touch them? No, you wouldn't be able to touch them. You'd just be able to get close, but not close enough. And what happens is when these magnetic field lines, when they come and they come close, they push off, they go the other direction, because they can't actually touch. They can't cross and they can't touch. And so they would just almost touch, but not quite, because they can't ever cross. And what happens if you had your fingers in the middle? So if you had fingers right in the middle, you could feel that force. That force that is being applied by being pushed apart, that's what you can feel. You can't feel the actual lines touching, you can just feel the, the push of that force. And that's what we're talking about. So it says, 
The motor effect is due to the force, so this force that you can feel acting on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. Now I'll go over that now as well. But what you should visualize is, again, you imagine you have a current carrying conductor here. So this is your current carrying conductor. And as I said, it produces its own magnetic field. So here we have our own magnetic field. And this was it, so we call it internal magnetic field, M field. And it's produced using that thumb rule. So it's going this way. And it's also perpendicular, it's also important. So if we have this being the direction of the flow, and this is the direction of its magnetic field, and perpendicular means that there's 90 degrees between the two. So there's 90 degrees in the middle. Right, so if you had, for example, a magnet here, we said the magnets, the lines of the magnets always go from north to south. So what would happen is the line would approach I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use green. They would try to get to, to north. And what would happen is, because right now, we're about to touch a different magnetic field. I said earlier, magnetic fields can't touch, not allowed to cross each other. So what would happen instead is, it would actually push, it would push this internal magnetic field, push it away. It's going to push it in some direction. And then it's going to still be able to cross without touching. So it's going to just push it away, right? So you can imagine it just pushed it away. I can't draw it being pushed away, but you can just imagine now it's it's going it's going away. It should be, but it's deflecting the other magnetic field, and that's a force. So the force, so it says, identify that the motor effect is due to the force acting on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. So here we have our current carrying conductor. This was it, and this magnetic field is producing. A magnetic field, which then pushes it away, it pushes the actual magnetic field of the current carrying conductor away, because otherwise the actual lines will cross, and that's what you experience. That's why you experience a force, that force that's being experienced, and that makes the whole actual thing move away. So because there are those almost clash, the whole thing is being moved away, and that allows movement to happen. Right? That's why how we can use magnets to move something, especially something that has produces its own current. Now this where in this case we have our current so again this was the current line here, the current current conductor. And it was producing I'm gonna draw it over there. So here we have our current carrying conductor. Oops. And we had our magnets here, one there, and one there. As you can as you can see, the actual direction, so this was the current carrying conductor. And it's also perpendicular to the actual magnet. And that's important because this produces the maximum force. And I'm going to go over why exactly in the next video and the video afterwards. But if it were parallel, right? So now I'm going to, the second example I'm going to show you is when it's parallel. So here, this one is we've got our magnets here and our current carrying conductor there in the same direction. Right? So you can see it's this plane. And now they're parallel, so they're next to each other. What happens now is you have the actual magnetic field being produced, but those can actually go through the, the actual magnetic field of the other one and not touch. So if we have it parallel, we have no force being produced. We have parallel means no force being produced. They have to be a perpendicular is ideal for the maximum force of what we had here, this example or at least a other angle but parallel. Parallel is bad. And we'll go over that soon as well. But if you wanted to find out what direction the actual movement is, if it's this way or if it's this way or if it's this way, you, what you can do is you can use something called the right hand rule. This is the right hand rule. And what you do is you actually use your whole hand, your right hand, right? Not your left hand, but your right hand. You have the current is your thumb. So the direction of the current is your thumb. The direction over the magnetic field are your fingers. And then the palm itself is a force. Right? So what that means is, for example, this example, we have okay, we have a current. I can't see it properly anymore, but his eye is here and that's moving up. So our thumb should be pointing up. So you can do that as well. Try that as well. Have your thumb pointing up. So if not your thumb finger, but your thumb. Magnetic field, if we have this example, and it's going to go that way. 
So our fingers will be going to this direction. And then what way would our palm face? Our palm, what if you do this exactly? So you have your thumb um, pointing up and your fingers pointing to the left. Then you have the palm looking right in your face, which means you can also draw it as this because you have the actual force moving into you, so into your face. So which means if the actual movement of that whole conductor would be, I can't draw it, but you can imagine it would be going towards you, it would be coming towards you because of this magnet. And so I'll go for the dot point itself again. And we're going to cover this right hand rule a lot more. So don't worry if you don't get it now, I'll just introduce you to it. But this says identify the motor effect is due to forces acting on a current carrying conductor in the magnetic field. So our current carrying conductor was this here, that rod where it had something, uh, electricity flow through. Our ma magnet, magnet was here, and the magnetic field was going perpendicular to the actual current carrying conductor. And because then we have that clash between the actual lines, what that means is the current carrying conductor has to move away to make way for the actual magnetic lines, because otherwise the magnetic lines will, will clash. And magnetic lines are never allowed to clash. They're never allowed to clash. And that's why movement occurs. Hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.